Hello and welcome to Clock Tower Game Studios. So today we're going to take a look at how I've been doing graffiti and posters for advertisements, band posters, flyers, and that sort of thing for my Neo Nagoya terrain. So before we jump in though, I do have one thing to get out of the way right off the bat. Um, life has changed. I have an official adult job that sadly I have to go do now. So uh, things are going to slow down here a little bit on the channel. I'm going to slow down the schedule back to the original at the start of the year where I was doing a video every other week. So that's going to start effectively after this video. So there'll be two videos in November and then another, another two in December and so on. I'm not sure how long that'll last. It could be indefinite, could be permanent, could change things a little bit depending on how schedules work out down the road. We'll see. I don't really know what the future will bring, which I suppose could be the motto of 2020. But uh, that's where we're at. Um, it's a good thing. Don't get the wrong impression. Uh, light, I, I need a job. So it's overall good to celebrate, but at the same time, got to relocate, got to move house, got to do everything. <laughs> so life's going to be pretty busy and kind of hectic for a while. So videos are going to slow down. I have probably two or three videos, including this one in mind, that are going to be short, little, easy to do videos that I can do regardless where I'm at in the world. So with that in mind, let's dive right into it and get started on some graffiti. All right, so the first thing you need to do is find appropriate graffiti and poster images you want to use. So I don't really have a good resource for this other than just Google image search. I'll just type in whatever keywords I want to use, in this case just Japanese graffiti, pop up some stuff that I like, pick through it, and take my time choosing some stuff that I want to use. So here you can see it brought up a lot of different results. I'm just going to go through and pick and choose until I find the one I want. One thing to keep in mind as you're creating your Word document is it's easiest to find these images that just have a plain white background. That's because the stickers that we're going to print this out on, which I'll show once we get to the actual printing stage, um, they are just transparent. And the printer I have, yours may be different, but the printer I have doesn't actually print white. So I have to use... Um, I have to use uh, just a clear background and then the key to success here is to put the stickers onto an area on your terrain where there's a bright enough background to shine through and highlight whatever pattern or graffiti you're using. This is a lot less important on the posters because they'll print out on normal paper so the white background will help already be in place with them. So anyway, once I've got this uh, all picked out, I've got my whole sheet filled. Uh, the paper can be kind of expensive, so I want to make sure I fill it up just about as much as I can. So I've printed these out on a page of Avery sticker project paper, and this will create a glossy finish, which we have to work around, but it's great for this sort of thing because you can stick it on any background, any kind of terrain, and as long as it's high contrast enough with the image, it'll stand out and you won't really have to do much else to make it pop. Once I've got my sheet printed out and I've given it a little time to dry so that the uh, ink doesn't smear while I'm working with it, I need to pick out which graffiti I want to put on there. So the first thing I'm doing is I know where I want to put it. I want to put it on the underside of the footbridge um, steps. So I just find one that'll fit in the space that I've got picked out and then I just carefully cut it out from the sheet. I use a sharp hobby knife for this. You can use scissors, obviously, but I want to use the hobby knife because I want to get as absolutely close to the printed pattern and picture as I can without damaging the actual image. So for that, I decided to go with this. I just cut it out kind of big and blocky at first and then go around trimming off as much of the excess after that as I can. Uh, it takes a few minutes, but the cleanup will help hide some of the... Um, 
some of the sticker surface, which is really shiny and sort of jarring on the terrain, which, like I said, we take some steps later to cover that up and help hide it, but it's still something you want to try and minimize as much as possible. Once I have the image cut out as nice and neatly as I can, I double check my placement and make sure it's going to fit. And then once I've got that done, I will carefully peel off the backing and stick the, uh, stick the sticker into place. Now when I'm doing this, I want to be careful and work as much air out from under it as possible, especially on these curved surfaces that aren't textured very much. I want to make sure that that really um, really gets as many of the air pockets out from under it as possible. So they'll be really obvious if you're not careful about it and you don't smooth it out nice and flat. So here we go. And as you can see even here, the gloss finish on that is really obvious. It does look good. You can see the graffiti nice and neatly on the uh, lighter gray background than the black and red. The red really helps it pop out. So the next thing to do after you've got that done is to help blend in the sticker and make it look like it's more part of the terrain and not just a decal that's stuck on it. So one of the easiest ways to do this is just with a little weathering to help blend it in and hide it with the terrain. So here I'm using some of the uh, stuff I found in the experiments I did a few weeks back where I use baking soda to add texture and grime and then I just use my homemade brown and black washes to kind of blend it in and add the streaks and the runs from whatever kind of liquid. Uh, after all, this is an outdoor bridge, so it's going to have some pretty heavy weathering. So here I've picked out a beer poster that I want to use as an advertisement. This is a real world beer poster that uh, I've printed out just on plain white printer paper. I also did this with some of the uh, actual Nagoya City uh, transit maps for the subways so I could add those in here because I wanted to kind of add little details and Easter eggs like that stuff that'll make me smile even though nobody else will probably notice it but it still makes me happy so uh, be sure when you're doing this sort of thing you can use basically anything you want um, as long as you're not selling any of these and making a profit off of it you can use any copywritten images any real world images just uh, be careful not to sell anything and uh, avoid anything that would you know upset anybody you play with um, I personally don't intend to use this in any kind of really public setting other than uh, for demo videos and stuff so I'm careful to avoid anything too racy I don't want to put any not safe for work images or anything on but I figure it's supposed to be a city so beer ads and stuff are perfectly acceptable so here I'm just carefully like I said cutting out the beer poster I remove all of the white edges as neatly as possible and then the next thing to do is to get the poster stuck in place so for that I'm going to uh, mix up a batch of watered down plain white Elmer's PVA glue all glue uh, so here I'm just getting my stuff together. I've got a little bit of water there uh, and of course the glue itself. I mix this uh, approximately two to one. 
uh, water to glue, glue to water. It doesn't. Basically, you want it to be thick enough to get a good smooth coating and give it a little bit to work around. I, I really don't use a lot of water for this. I just put a little smear of glue on one side, get my brush wet, and then work it across the uh, surface of the palette until I get the consistency I want. And then I just paint it onto the back of the uh, back of the poster. And once I've got it painted and coated, I just stick it into place and adjust it until I'm happy with the placement. Just like with the sticker, I wanna be careful to get as much of the air out from under the poster as I can. So I just press it and kind of slide it into place and work it. And then just like we did with the uh, graffiti stickers with the posters where they're gonna be exposed like this and it makes sense to, we wanna weather around them to help blend them in. So here I've dusted on some of my uh, baking powder and then I just add my washes and everything to grime it up and make it look like it's part of the terrain. As you can see, the final results turn out pretty well. The key to success with the sticker approach is you want to do your best to blend it in and look like it's actually part of the terrain. The posters, you can embellish and make it stand out more so it looks like it's not part of the terrain by adding things like frames or a little sheet of plastic over it to look like a protective cover for signage and stuff. So here you can see some finished results and I think they turned out really, really well. Hopefully you do too. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and it inspired you to build something of your own. So be sure if you did enjoy it to hit the like uh, button down there and share, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you'll see what we're up to in the future. Got a couple more exciting builds coming up soon. And of course, some rules discussions for Sierra that I think are coming down the pipeline. But uh, you can also check up on what we're up to on a daily basis on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Facebook's where we make all the big announcements. Twitter is where we occasionally post about random stuff going on. And Instagram gets the most love with absolutely daily updates um, for whatever we're up to here at the Clock Tower. Usually it's hobby related, sometimes it's other stuff, but for the most part, if you wanna keep up with the day-to-day -day ins and outs of what's going on, check in with us at Instagram. All the links to all this will be in the description below. You can also support us with Buy Me A Coffee and Patreon. Uh, when you subscribe to the Patreon, you get access to the Seer playtesting rules, uh, monthly uh, special, uh, special scenario for the game as well as uh, other monthly content, including short stories. So be sure to check that out if you're interested. Thank you guys again very much for watching. And remember, at the Clock Tower, it's always game time.